Oh, what a difference a day makes. Yeah, there's a boat. I mean, say, it still is the day. There's a boat behind us that was on a mirroring ball. He, he's legging it, don't know where he's going, because we can see out the entrance, and there's no way in God's green earth we're going out that. Well, basically, um, the waves are, the top of the waves is like a cliff. Yeah. And um, the top of the waves are touching the top of the cliff right. from our perspective. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll... Um, Try and get you a picture of that, but using the zoom lens on the um, other camera. Yeah, on the other camera. It can be uh, a bit problematic. Uh-huh. Um, but, um, but anyway, um, they are as tall as the cliff. And um, uh -huh. further on round, we have... Um, waves uh, still on the side yeah all right so let's get down to the meat oh my lord that was a big one let's get down to the meat of the matter three no six hours ago we were clinging on for dear life wondering if everything would hold together honest to goodness oh. i was like this but um we've at last um, it was bad it was bad last night we we tried distracting ourselves with all the usual things listening to music uh re reading stories Game. Even playing Scrabble. I voluntarily played Scrabble, that's how bad it got around here. Um, and none of it worked, but the winds were only up to about, in the, in the high 30s, maybe 40 knots. But then about 4 o'clock this morning, or 3 o'clock this morning, they just accelerated all the way up to 50 knots. And that, that got our attention. <laughs> Trust me, I was dressed, but, oh. When we, when we looked at the wind speed and saw 49 point something knots on the wind speed indicator, um, we just went, got kitted up, got togged, shoes on, sailing jackets on. Uh, everything on standby. And um, we had a quick breakfast at four in the morning. <laughs> and we just sat here and it was pitch black, but the boats behind us, um, we're rolling around like there's no tomorrow. Now the thing is, that these things generally don't come out in camera very well, do they? No, they don't. Uh, I mean, so we have tried to do our best. Um, and you can see in the footage that I have got, you can see white caps. Now you've got to remember that this is a very sheltered bay. Yeah, this, we, we um, chose this anchorage because we can't get much of a sea state here. No, you've only got uh, a short period or a short well, distance to for, get the sea state. For, we... for most of this, um, the wind was from over there and the shore is like 200 metres away. So you can't build up a sea state in 200 metres. No, but then the um, when the boats were behind us, we were more pointing more towards the slot. Yeah, towards Sherkin Island and things like that. and. That's like a mile away, so it's got a mile to build up sea state. Yes, but the thing is, it did manage to pick up sea state in a mile. It did. Um, and, um, you was, know... There was flying spray all over the windows, we could hardly see out. Oh, but um, a couple of our followers, because we did post, uh, was talking about different types of anchor, because oh. we've just got the no, one No, 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 anchor. no, no. Don't talk about anchors. The, the internet explodes if you talk about anchors. No, we're only talking about <laughs> the fact that one of our followers was talking about a double anchor setup. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest, the main reason I didn't want to do a, a double anchor self spare setup is I've not practiced it before, and there's things that I'd like to practice before the hit shits the fan and I actually do it. Yeah. Um, so that's my first issue. My my worry about them is I'm a great believer in keep it simple, stupid, and um, the kiss philosophy. And the reason that I, I like it is because there's less to go wrong. So we have a, an oversized anchor for this boat. We certainly do have an oversized anchor. According yes. to Lumar, a 10 kilogram anchor does this, but we have a 16. <coughs> um, Trust me, we really like that anchor. We like that anchor. Uh, we dropped it in an area with excellent holding uh, and we put out so much chain that the chain weighs more than the anchor does. Yes, it does. Um, and we, we dug it well in and it held. It certainly did. But, our but, arc. But you can see our arc <coughs> just swung around on the chart plotter and you can see that we, we went through nearly 180 degrees on that. Mm. 
very and, close to 180. And that's my problem with the double anchors. Mm. Because say you drop one off the stern like a four and a half thing, um, it means that the boat would never swing to that wind. It would always have the wind massively on one beam and later on massively on the other beam. And that's not good. No, that's definitely not good. Another policy is to have uh, your anchors as a bridle. Um, affair. Yeah. yeah, so you got one anchor 30 degrees off the buy and the other anchor 30 degrees off the other buy. Yeah, now trying to set that up, you know, that's why I would prefer to practice it before I actually do it. You know, trying to pra do that in. I mean, the rationale is one anchor comes loose, you've got a second. I can understand the policy, but it's just all I'm saying is to try and set that all up and never practice it. That's just not me. Also, if you have to lift the anchor to go somewhere, you've got two anchors to lift, you've twice as much to do. Yeah. And, and in bad conditions, lifting your anchor is not that straightforward. I mean, so we did uh, lift our anchor at Rosslair, but trust me on this, Rosslair was like a picnic in the park in comparison to last night. I slept well at Rosslair, I didn't sleep well last <laughs> night. I hardly got a wink of sleep all night. Um, but even lifting it over there at Shirkin, where we were, um, it had, things hadn't really kicked off, but it was getting that way. Even lifting it there wasn't the easiest. No, because um, it's just hard. But at least you've only got one anchor to deal with. So having the two anchors... And there's another strategy I've seen um, where you have the one chain and you drop your anchor and then you let out, say, 10 or 15 metres of your chain and attach another anchor and drop it down and then let out the rest of your chain. So you've got two anchors on the same chain. I would hate to be lifting that. I can understand that that would be really, really well bedded in. Because you, you get double the drag on the anchor. Yes, um, but you've, you've got to drop, when you're dropping the second anchor, you've then got to start your chain count again. I, thi I think they're actually going to try and go out. That French boat that just went past us. He's actually heading for the entrance. Well, we're going to see some kicking off any minute now. Not kicking off as in, you know, up and down action. I don't know what we're going to see. Anyway, back to the anchors. <laughs> there may be a brief interruption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as we wonder what the heck the French bow is doing. <laughs> uh, one other little point, um, putting the anchors actually to one side. Um, one of our fallbacks was mirroring boys. If the anchor did drag badly, it was a couple of mirroring boys. But to be honest, that plan was a non-starter. Because you took pictures of that mirroring boy in the night. And the winds were so strong that the mirroring boy was disappearing in behind the waves. And we're in a protected anchorage. It's like, it's like three metres deep here. Mm. I mean, how big a wave can you build up? And that, that boy was disappearing. Mm. So... <sighs> it certainly wouldn't have been great, but... Oh. I can tell you now, I am just so glad that that is over, but we're going to, now that we have got, how shall I put this, level heads, rather than in the moment heads, we will be reviewing what we're going to be doing, because at the moment we still haven't made a decision. Yeah, we pushed it up in the heat of the moment, right, that's it, we're done, we're not doing the West Coast. But we're going to at least now review it and see yeah. what happens. We are. <sighs> oh! <laughs> right, interruption over. The uh, boat in question has just gone out the slot and um, its hull was obscured by the waves. It was dropping down and there's enough wave action in there to hide the entire hull of a Beneteau 38. Yeah. Oceanus. Oceanus 38. So like, you know, that's like, what, two, three metres clearance off the sea? Yeah. But um, it's not something that Beverly and I are doing. Uh, I mean, say... If the blue and orange comes tearing past behind us, I would not be surprised. Because they had a lot of work recently around here. They have. I mean, so obviously uh, there's been the boat while we were here um, that was on the side. Yeah, well, the, the other boat from Belfast that got, got caught when it's anchor drag. Um, he is okay. His boat's okay. He's bent his rudder, but they've taken him up the river to the yard and it's going to get repaired. Um, um, it certainly cost him money already though, he's only got towed so far, hasn't been lifted and it's already 500 euros, yep. just so that you know. Well, it's... It, it is what it, it is, is though, I'm sorry, it's you, just, well, this is what happens. You, you need it and maybe, maybe his insurance company will haggle it down, I don't know, that, that, that's up to them. That's up to them, but... Um, so that's that. Um, 
just around the corner from here, the place we were going to go once we'd left Skull, um, another boat went on the rocks there and the RNLI towed it off. Lawrence Cove Marina, where we were also going to go, that, that's where that happened. There was uh, another one around there which also had the RNLI out and there was a small, I think it was like a, a 20 footer boat that got caught out with engine failure. The other one got caught by a pot. Yeah, the one um, a month before... Yeah, there's confusion about that. Yeah, but there's one before we arrived. Um... And it got smashed to matchsticks just in this entrance. Yeah, so the RNLI have been doing great sterling work. Yeah, they have. And if you want to donate to them, we Please always do. encourage everyone to donate to the RNLI. We've raised money for them in the past and we have a standing order every month that pays some money to them. It's not a huge amount, but every month they get something from us. And, you know, if you're in and around the UK, why not set up a standing order? Five, ten pound a month, whatever it is you fancy doing. Four pound a month, a pound a week. Just, but, just just, give them something because, by God, when you, when you need that lifeboat. Honest to goodness. I mean, see, when we were coming in, the, just the fact that... Um, they were on standby was good for us it just meant that we knew that there was something one of the things you learn um well one of the things that we've learned and partly because a lot of the staff at Bangor Marina are RNI people they're, they're actually crew for the RNI on the boats I mean and we talk to RNI people they will say if you have a problem tell us early we won't launch the lifeboat just tell us you have a problem mm. then we can alert people to be ready so if the problem gets worse, we just go. But so that's, that's why we, when we came in and we had that engine failure, we did at least tell them. We told them that we were not in any danger. We did not require assistance. We had an engine failure and we weren't sure we could get in. And they just monitored us. And when we were in, we told them that we were in and we were fairly sure we could anchor safely. And they said, no problem. We'll tell everyone to stand down. But the earlier they can get out to you, the safer it is for them as well as you. So if you, if you think you're going to get into trouble or you have difficulty, don't wait till the last moment. Tell them as early as you can because it's safer for them and safer for you. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. So that's us. So our main decision today is do we go into the pontoon today for water or do we hang out tonight and go in tomorrow for water? I like the idea of keep um, bank it early. That's one of our sayings here on Salty Lass. Uh, which is bank it early, yeah, and you, it's just sort of like try a, and do yeah. things. You have a choice between doing something now or doing something later. Generally speaking, do, do it, it now, now because um, at least then we've got water, we've got things on board, we're sorted. Yeah, and at least that's that off our list of things to do. Yeah. Well, it's decisions, decisions, isn't it, Bev? It is, and we have been trawling through all sorts of weather forecasts this morning, and one blindingly obvious conclusion has just slapped us in the face, hasn't it? Well, the problem is, um, today, uh, we can go north. Fantastic. And um, But as the weather goes on and continues, there's yet another storm coming with yet another I-don't-want-to-know conditions. Mm. Um, coming through and it's going to be slapping the um... it's going to be rough for the next week again once again like, it, like I've often said on this channel I don't believe the detail of the forecast but I do believe in their generalities and the general forecast for the next week isn't particularly good no um, like I say we could go north today but then we're going to be having yet another storm and and <sighs> also to go north we have to spend our time beating into the wind and beating into what what's predicted to be one and a half metre swells, mm. um, which is not really going to be fun. No, so although you know very well that I wanted to go north, I've been wanting um, and, and go around the west coast, it's just not going to happen. And the, realistically, you have to set the sails to suit the wind. Mm. And um, although the winds are going to still be high today, we will at least be going downwind. Or at least mostly across them. Yeah, well, we should have them on our quarter at the least, shouldn't we? They'll be on our quarter, so yeah. um, that will make life a lot easier. We will have to um, fit some kind of preventer, though, because of, uh, like Beverly says, the, the boom and the swell and things. We may well do, it just depends on the wind. But I don't want to do this, but... 
I think it's the only option we can make. One of our friends who's very much into weather forecasting has said that um, apparently this is a, a an El Nino or El Nino year. I don't, don't know which one it is. It's one of the two. I thought it was El Nino, but yeah, but regardless, anyway. it's something I'm going to have to read up about over the winter. And she says that when you get one of these weather events uh, happening, generally speaking, the summer's a write-off. And she reckons that this is one of those years and that this, you know... She, she says it's a pity you didn't come down the other way, you know, start early and come down the West Coast. But we know somebody who's doing that, our friends in China Girl. And they've been stuck in Galway for the best part of a month. And I presume they're paying marina fees in there. Hmm. And whereas at least here at Baltimore, we have got onto the pontoon uh, a couple of times. But that's mainly to do things like getting water, making sure that I've got washing. You can't afford to shop in Baltimore. That'd be shop and ruin you. <laughs> the prices in there are unbelievable. <laughs> I, I, I bought one yellow pepper yesterday and it was two euros for one yellow pepper. I can't believe it. They're like 50p anywhere else. <laughs> So I would say that Skull has got much cheaper shops. Oh, anywhere's got cheaper shops than Baltimore. I think that it's down here in the end of the world. <laughs> Everything else I've carted in. Uh, oh, it does but, feel like the end of the but world. But it's, it's also quite clearly set up for barbecues. I mean, almost all the meats they have on display are things like chicken wings, um, ribs with sauces, uh, Bacon, they've got bacon by the ton, eggs by the ton, and bread by the ton, and that says to me, breakfasts. <laughs> bacon, eggs, and toast, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, they've got loads of that sort of stuff. Um, very, but... very little else. And the vegetables, by the way, if you do buy them in the shop, use them quick. They're 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 well along. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think that's because nobody wants to pay you two euros a pepper. <laughs> oh, uh, goodness sake. So but... how on earth are we going to make that? Our episodes fun and whatever as we go past. Well, we don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. So what we're going to do, our plan at the minute is to scarper back along the south coast because... As quickly as possible. The south coast doesn't actually run east. The south coast at this bit runs northeast. So with westerly weather coming in, we do get something of a lee. Hmm. Yeah. So we're just going to scarper as quickly as we can. And do you know what? Our blog is literally about what really happens and what it's really like sometimes i would like a little bit less reality <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice if the fantasy came to, came to visit wouldn't it It'd be great. but this is what a real <laughs> so real bit. sailing is like in these areas so to, to summarize our journey to date we were late leaving bangor because of weather yep we had a hard time getting down the irish sea because of weather yep we had a hard time getting west to here. Because of weather. Because of weather. <laughs> and then we finally got to here. We've been stuck here for five weeks in Baltimore because of weather. Um, <laughs> I think we've given it a good try. I think we've given it a good try. I really don't fancy, uh, although I'd like to go north like Gaynor, I really don't fancy the north coast, uh, sorry, the, the west coast in these conditions because there's very, very little shelter on the west coast. It's a very rocky coast. Yeah, um, and um, now I'm not too sure exactly where it is. Uh, Actually, there's very little, shelter, very little shelter on the east coast, but at least it's a sandy coast. That is true. Yeah. So if you do get the wind coming from the west... Yeah, you, you, you can not at least just put your, put your nose on a beach somewhere and drop the anchor like we did in Rustler. Yeah, there's lots of places like that, but, you know, you do actually need the wind from that direction, but never yeah. mind. Anyway, regardless of anything, we've made the decision and uh, I'm afraid to say it's... We're not going around Ireland this year. The Wild Atlantic Way turned out to be rather wilder than we wanted this year, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, far too wild for us. However, just to give you a little glimpse into future plans. Yeah. The idea is that we're going to go north and possibly nip into the Clyde and spend the rest of the season up in the Clyde. That's one possibility. Um, if we do that... We will see if next year has a, another El Nino Nina. We'll be finding whatever. out about that. We'll, we'll be finding out about that. And it may well be that next year we'll try coming around Ireland the other way. Yeah. So we'll just see. We don't know. Um, the one Everything thing, is up for grabs. The one thing we've learned is don't try and predict, don't, don't try and predict too much down here because it just doesn't work. 